India became independent? Well, because of the hard work of the founding fathers of India. What freedom do millions of our countrymen because of their hard struggle under the great leadership of Mahatma Gandhi. But there is also another story which is not highlighted how India became independent. We will always look at the material effort made by men and women as well as all other things the British gave freedom to India. But you know, in 1947, we could not have good freedom but by the grace of God. Therefore, there is one thing you and I, we cannot forget is our freedom is a gift from God himself. All the others were, may have in fact, real instruments. When you look at the unfolding of events, you know, from 1940 till 45, Winston Churchill was a Prime Minister of England, of Great Britain. And Winston Churchill was adamant not to give freedom to India. And that was his wish. And India should always remain under the British crown. He also did not believe that Indians could rule well. All the judiciary, executive, and the democratic structure built up by Britain would be simply shattered by the Indian irresponsible politicians of India, once he said. He did not have trust in them. But you know, what happened was, after the war, it was a miracle. Many thought Winston Churchill would come back to power in 1945 during the general election. But it did not happen. It was really a miracle that he did not come back to power at that time. It was Clement Attlee. Clement Attlee's Labour Party got 393 seats in the House of Commons. And Winston Churchill's party, the Tories, the Conservatives, they got only 174. Almost two-third majority even making an amendment to the, the, the bill or bringing a bill as such a, an important bill. That's why when the Freedom Bill was voted in the House of Commons, Winston Churchill was really desperate. He was sitting at the, uh, really sitting there without even raising either four or eight, but was simply abstaining from voting and without speaking anything. He was a disappointed person. And for the next five years, it was a Clement Attlee, the British Prime Minister. As soon as he became Prime Minister of 1945 itself, he called the, the, that time Lord Wavell to uh, Britain, London, and told him what about the study the whole matter. Then the, Lord Wavell was really wavering. And he said it, is very, it would be very difficult to give freedom in India, a lot of problems. But Adli was determined. Adli then immediately called him back to London and sent Mountbatten. Told Mountbatten the following words. He told him, if you can keep India united, keep it united. If you are not able to keep it united, at least gain something, get something from the wrecks, from the wreck that is happening there. And if nothing, but whatever be, under in all circumstances, make sure that Britain leaves India at the earliest. Leave India at the earliest, leaving to the Indians the administration. And that, those were the words of um, the Clement Attlee. And we know the further events that happened. Behind there is something, God's design, because there was really a Mahatma. For when God is truth and truth is God. He was a worshipper of truth and therefore his a, a worship of God was really meaningful. That is none else but Mahatma Gandhi. That's why today, dear friends, you and I, we stand before this uh, flag. And what was Gandhi's greatest weapon? Ahimsa, Satyagraha. But Satyagraha was empowered and energized by two other things, fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer. Every time when his own followers went wrong, Gandhi was there for fasting. Many found, including many other leaders, with the old behavior by this politician. 
he would be simply fasting when somebody some riot takes place and someone misbehaves that was gandhi's attitude that's why it is really a grace of god the freedom of the country is today what i want to tell is a grace of god we need to thank god and this should be our weapons also to fight against any tyrants wow this should be our weapon fasting and prayer as religious as priests as seminarians let us take these weapons very very seriously because the god is the lord of history and the lord will guide and we are on the right path there's no place for pessimism in our world today in our, among us we should not be pessimistic optimistic god guides the destiny of the whole world well when the, you will you hear the daniel 7:14 what is there there they will be the earlier rulers were all the kingdoms of the earth kings of the earth they were like animals then came someone like a son of man and that's a god's plan who is why though so many people may come sometimes your tyrants may come to power but god's reign will is the last one that god will accomplish but he needs our prayers he needs our fasting we have to do that the hard struggle like mahatma gandhi and jai hind god bless you